you know what you're saying, you always need something in your back pocket. Joe and I were ministering at a Korean church in Fanville for a while. Mm -hmm. um, they had a lot of midnight masses going on there around Christmas time, so we showed up for the midnight service. We were sitting there, you know, in the audience, and opened up the bulletin. To my amazement, I was there to speak. Nobody told me. And our family was to sing, and they were all there for, for Christmas time. So we, I kind of got a few seconds to get my thoughts together. And uh, in my coat pocket, I had a Christmas card that had been sent to me that had a good message in it, and that's what I preached. <laughs> my Christmas card. I preached right in out of that Christmas card. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, it worked out good. Very good. My family never saw me until that point in time. Started a new thing. When I bought a bus next week, started traveling. No, not really. But anyway. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Who ever heard that? You remember the person who came up with that, who coined that? Arthur Fletcher. He was the head of the United Negro College many, many years ago. I'm talking about when I was a child. I would see billboards traveling with Arthur Fletcher's saying that he coined, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And that made a big impression on me. I don't know if it helped me in school, but it could have helped me a little bit. Um, but what an what a incredible uh, phrase that was formed many, many years ago and have spoken to many people. And when I was putting this message together, I thought I would honor that phrase and use it as a title for my message. And it is true, as it reigns true today, that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. The Bible has a lot to say about the mind and thinking. We've heard me tell you this before, that there are over 400 scriptures in the Bible. That's right. 400 scriptures that have to do with think, thought, mind, and reason. Didn't put reason in that right out of space. But 400 scriptures <clears throat> on that subject in the Bible. That means that God is concerned about how you use your mind and how you think. 400 scriptures, yes, yes, yes. It's true. And we're not going to all cover all 400 scriptures today because we'd like to get down to our meal. And the head can only receive what the seed can endure. Right? So we're just going to talk about But if we're, we're, we're going to do two weeks on this. We're going to do today. And then next Sunday, we're going to finish this message. I think you'll enjoy. The first... Scripture is in Luke 8.35 and this is a story an account of a great incredible deliverance. Came to Jesus this, this man who was possessed came to Jesus and they found the man in his right mind after he came to Jesus and Jesus delivered him from the demons and you'll remember the story the word legion comes up in the ancient Roman army a legion could be anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 most scholars put the word 6,000 the Bible actually says this man had a legion of demons which sounds beyond what I can put my head around and remember, they were cast into the sheep of that goats, and they ran down the, 
the heel into the precipice and were crashed into the, to the mountain. And it's kind of interesting, and all through what I'm giving you on my notes, we only put a gist of the scripture because we didn't have, we didn't want to take the space, we wanted to give you some room to put some notes there. But what was interesting in the scriptures is that they found the man clothed and in his right mind. One translation says he was dressed and he was sane. Uh, I, this, this, the the, the uh, commentary says the, the disciples must have had some extra clothes with them to clothe him. They may have taken a piece here, a piece there, but they clothed him. And that's why it says he, he was found clothed and in his right mind. The whole story of that is in verse 26 through 35 of Luke chapter 8. You read the whole portion of that account. How many are glad that you're in your right mind today? That means a lot. John and I, a number of years ago, watched an incredible movie, George. It was called A Beautiful Mind. Very interesting movie. Very interesting. Uh, her college president, at the pres president of the college there at, at Moore County, uh, actually told Joan that it was one of the best movies for him of all time. A Beautiful Mind. It was directed by Ron Howard and won four Oscars. Incredible movie about uh, this incredible mathematician professor who was a brilliant man, had a brilliant mind, and was taken over by paranoia uh, of extreme measure. And, uh, but it, it, is, it is a thought-provoking movie. But I want to tell you something. God wants to not only get our hearts right, but he wants to get your thinking right and your mind right with him, as well as your heart right with him. Uh, there, there are people throughout my ministry in churches that they have a heart for the Lord and need some help with their thinking, with their mind, with the way they thought. Um, so God wants us to get our hearts right with Him and He wants to help us get our heads right. Amen? I mean, known some people that you pray for them and they get their head right. Maybe some of your relatives, possibly. How many ever said the word, are you out of your mind? Or what were you thinking? Well, maybe they weren't thinking. But uh, so the first story we see is a man was restored back to his right mind when Jesus delivered him from his possession of demons. And 2 Timothy 1.7, you're familiar with this one, very much so. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but God has given us a sound mind. A spirit of fear is a disposition of the mind. The spirit of fear could be a disposition of the mind. God has given us a sound mind. He has given us the spirit of self-control. One translation says of 2 Timothy 1.7, God has given us a well-balanced mind. That's good. Another translation I really like and I use quite often. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but He's given us good mental health. Somebody say amen. I'll tell you what, we, we, we really don't understand how, we need to really understand how important it is that God has come to get our thinking right. We have right thinking. If we're walking with the Lord, 
walking in His light as He is the light. We have fellowship with God. Not only is our heart cleansed by the blood, but our minds, we think right as well as we walk right. Both. All of this is God has given us a sound mind, well balanced mind, a spirit of a spirit controlled temperament is another thing we may phrase with that. A spirit controlled temperament. You ever seen a kid have a temper tantrum? You knew there was a problem there. <laughs> there was an issue there. Yeah. Then we go to 2 Peter 3, 1. He talks about a pure mind. Stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance. By remembering them what is going to happen in the last days. And what it's referring to, when you start thinking about what's coming in the last days, it should give you a pure mind by the way of remembrance. One translation of 2 Peter 3 and 1 says, Revive your sincere mind. Revive your sincere mind. Let me give you another one that's really good of 2 Peter 3 1. Rouse you to honest thought. Rouse, R O U S E, rouse you to honest thought. And what, in one commentary, it, it, it's talking about memories. Things the Lord has done. Memories. Revive your sincere mind. Those memories where God has been faithful. Don't you know it helps you when you remember when God has been faithful? Does it help us? Yes, it does. It says, stir up your pure minds by reminding what God has done. And actually, 2 Peter 3 1 is speaking of what's going to be happening in the last days when Christ returns. That's going to be something to be excited about. And then in Romans 8 6, he speaks of a spiritual mind. So we have a right mind, a sound mind, a pure mind, and a spiritual mind. Romans 8, 6, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. What does carnally minded mean? Carnally minded means that we're trying to live for God outside of God's prescribed order. We're trying to live for God outside of God's prescribed order order. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Skip, you better be careful. They're trying to get up. Maybe I'll get someone to help you. I think you'll be good there, Skip. Okay. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. In other words, if we walk in the Spirit, think in the Spirit, that's where life and peace is. If you lose your peace, you may want to go back and become spiritually minded through reading the Word. When we read the Word, it makes us spiritually minded. 1 Peter one thirteen talks about a girded mind. Gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. In view of what God has done for us, we should be hopeful. One translation says, in view of what God has done for us, we should be hopeful. We should be filled with optimism. That's what it means. Gird up the loins of your mind and be hopeful, be sober concerning the things of God. And on that latter portion of that verse 13, it speaks of the glorification of the saints and it speaks of the coming rapture. 
Listen, when you think about the glorification of the saints and you think about the coming rapture, you can gird up the loins of your mind and you can be sober and hopeful both. Let me give you in the um, other translations, it says brace up your minds. Brace. Brace up your minds. And I like this uh, translation because it carries it a little bit further. Gird up your minds for action. Gird up your minds for action. Prepare your minds or gird up your minds for action. In other words, we gird up the loins of our mind or we brace up our minds, we gird them up to get ready to do something. And as well as be hopeful, both. So we have a right mind, a sound mind, a pure mind, a spiritual mind, and a girded mind, or gird up the minds for action and optimism. I mean, believe we have every reason in the world to be optimistic. There's no room for Christians to be pessimistic. We have every reason in the world to be optimistic. We're on our way to heaven, people. We may have to go through some bumps down here, but we're on our way to heaven. That's optimism. Come on. Hopeful. Optimism. He says, when you think about that, gird up the launch of your mind and be sober, be hopeful, be optimistic. What about a garrison mind? Philippians 4, 7. I know you're familiar with this verse. And the peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds. Listen, sanctifying peace beyond the pale of human comprehension. How many knows the peace of God goes beyond what we can even wrap our minds around completely? A garrisoned mind. Mount a guard over. Are you ready for this? God says, mount a guard over your mind. Mount a guard over your mind. I mean, the Word of God helps protect our thinking. Amen? And it will guard our minds. That's why we have to keep programming our minds with the Word of God. Programming our spirits with the Word of God. Because it guards our mind. And the peace of God shall keep your hearts and mind. And the peace of God comes over us as we douse ourselves with the Word of God. As we continue to read His Word, we experience His peace. So we've got a right mind, a sound mind, a pure mind, a spiritual mind, a girded mind. What about a positive mind? He said, finally, brethren, the latter portions of those verses. What sort of things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report? He says you've got to think about those things. Think on those things. We can do this. I said we can do this provided that the cross is the object of our faith. Christ and the cross has got to be the object of our faith if you want to have a positive mind. I say, if you want to keep a positive mind, you have to have the cross and Christ as the object of your faith. A positive mind. And then he goes on and talks about a renewed mind in Romans 12 too. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed to this world, to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Stop living in accordance with the customs of this world. Stop living in accordance with the customs of this world. That's what it means being conformed to this world is all about. Start thinking spiritually. How many knows what Proverbs 23, 7 says? As a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. How many want to get your mind renewed? 
Let me give you some other translations of Romans 12 too. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by a new attitude in your mind. How many believe that you, sometimes you need an attitude adjustment? I mean, you know, sometimes your kids need an attitude adjustment. My mama knew how to do that. She had to pinch my little leg and give me an attitude adjustment. She knew right where the buttons were. Didn't she pinch that thing and I'd get, I'd, I'd start thinking better immediately. It's amazing how that would happen. It didn't take much to do it. Think about this now in Romans 12 too. A renewed mind, a new attitude of mind. Remold your mind. Remold it to think different. Okay, now let's go to the next one. First Peter 3 a. a unified mind. Be of one mind. An agreement. He speaks of an agreement. Be of one mind. A unified mind. Or one translation says like-minded. Be of one mind. He goes on to say, regard for each other's welfare. Show regard for each other's welfare. Tenderhearted. This whole verse 8 gives the idea of being in agreement with one another. It gives the idea of the word family. We want to be in agreement with one another like a family. Speaking of the family of God. So we've got a right mind, a sound mind, a pure mind, a spiritual mind, a girded mind, a garrison mind, a positive mind, a renewed mind, a light mind or a unified mind. And Isaiah 26, 3 says a directed mind. We'll keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed. You feel that you have to direct what you're thinking. Stayed on me. Walking in and talking with my mind, stayed on Jesus. Walking in and talking with my mind, stayed on Jesus. The devil can't get you if your mind stayed on Jesus. The devil can't get you if your mind is stayed on Jesus. Andre Crouch, Jerry, wrote that. A directed mind. One translation calls it a constant mind. A constant mind. And another one calls it a steadfast mind. We'll keep it perfect. Listen. Because he trusts in you, he will keep in perfect peace whose mind is first of all stayed on thee because he trusts in you. Now, this verse Three of Isaiah is a prophetic verse. It speaks of the coming glad day of the millennial reign. It speaks of the Prince of Peace who will reign supremely on the earth. But I want you to know today, every believer can enjoy the fruit of this promise by keeping our minds centered and focused on what Christ has done for us. Amen? It's called total and complete trust. Amen. Right mind, a sound mind, a pure mind, a spiritual mind, a girded up mind, a garrison, positive, renewed, unified in like-mindedness and we direct our minds to keep them on Christ and trust in Him. And we'll have, we're going to deal with the mind of Christ and how that all works next week. That'll be so worthwhile. And I'll give you a little hint. This is to get you started thinking. The Holy Spirit in you is the mind of Christ. Are you with me? The Holy Spirit in you, working in you, becomes the mind of Christ in you. And I'll give you scripture for that next week and we'll go into that. Praise the Lord. How many are glad in your, in your right mind? And how many knows a, a mind is a terrible thing to waste? Use it. And use it to the glory of God. Amen. Let's stand together. Good.